Hello everyone, I'm Ari Stepchansky. Thank you for joining me again, and thank you for taking time out of your schedule to learn a little bit more about the time sculpting feature that we're now shipping in Templator's latest release. Okay, so with the time sculpting feature comes this concept of layer trimming. And I'm gonna show you by example how this thing works and how it can make your compositions even more dynamic. So let's take a look at layer trimming. All right, so what we have here are four basic layer trimming rules. And the first one, we can see in point trims to out point. And what that means is that the in point of a layer will trim until it meets the out point of a target layer. And so in this example, we can see comp one's in point trimming down to where the out point of the footage layer is. The next one is in point trims to in point. And what this means is that a layer's in point will trim down to the endpoint of a target layer. So in this example, we can see comp one's endpoint trimming down to the endpoint of the footage layer. Now, our third rule is out point trims to out point. And what that means is that a layer's out point will trim to where a target layer's out point is. So in this example, we can see comp one's out point trimming down to the out point of the footage layer. And finally, we have out point trims to endpoint. And what this means is that the out point of a layer will trim to the in point of a target layer. So here we can see comp one's out point trimming down all the way to the in point of the footage layer. All right, so now that we understand conceptually what these rules are about, let's go ahead and, and see how these are actually applied. We've got these four assets here and we wanna make one into a layer for a composition. So I'm gonna go ahead and create a new composition called render and take this asset here and make it into a layer in the render composition. This project file is linked up to a data source through the templator panel. And if we go here, we can see there's a column called long runtime. And these are just references to footage files that are four seconds or longer. So I'll go ahead and apply the templator settings effect to this layer. And I'm gonna go ahead and rename it long runtime. Okay. So now if I go to my preview button here in the templator panel and hit next row, uh, what you're seeing here is the source of the layer is swapping. We can see here that in some cases, this out point does not match the end time. And that's a problem that needs to be resolved. So what we do is we use something called preservation. So if we go to our templator settings controls and go to time, and then we go to trim, we can then enable the preserve end parameter. And what that means is that the out point will always match the end time of a layer. So if I hit preview next row, you can see here, uh, the out point is always going to match the end time of the layer, regardless of how long the layer lasts. Now, let's say we want this clip to last for three seconds long before we introduce another clip. Let's take a look at how we can do that. All right, I'm gonna go back into the project panel and just drag down this footage asset as another layer in the composition. What I'm gonna do is just advance this timeline indicator to three seconds. And then I'm gonna shift drag this until the end point snaps to the time indicator. Okay, so here what I'm gonna do is for the long run time layer, I'm gonna go back to the effect controls and I'm gonna uncheck preserve end. So I'm gonna say that the out point target is this four second MC Mario title and that the out point trims to the end point of that layer. That means that this out point trims to the end point of this layer. So. Now, if I go ahead and hit preview next row, what you're gonna see is that regardless of how long this layer is, the out point of this layer will always match the end point of this layer, the target. So if I hit preview again, you can see that it is trimmed there so that it just is conformed to a specific duration. Now, let's go ahead and map data to this layer. I'm gonna go ahead and call this shot one and I'm going to then bring down another asset and that's going to hap happen to come in at three seconds later than this endpoint. So I'll just advance to six seconds and bring that there. 
And then for this shot one, what I'd like to do is apply the Templator Settings effect, and then under Time, Trim, Outpoint Target will be this one, and then Outpoint Trims to Endpoint. So now if I just do Current State, you're gonna see that you know this layer gets bounded by the trimming, as does this one, and this one obviously doesn't. But let's go ahead and map data to this one as well. And we'll call this one shot two. Oh, we have to go to the next row, preview. We can see that regardless of you know the durations of these layers, they are conforming to a specific duration by virtue of having set up these trimming rules. So how is this actually practical? Well, let's go ahead and open up a different After Effects project file to show you how trimming is actually useful. All right, let's take a look. So this project is essentially a sequence of titles and footage clips. So if we look here, we can see here's our title, our first title. Then here's our first clip, our second title, our second clip. And then we have the final slate here, the closing title. Okay, now let's go ahead and take a look at clip one. Here we can see that the duration of the footage source is actually longer than where the out point is for the layer. So this means that something's going on here with this layer insofar as no matter how many times I hit preview, this out point will always remain at this position in the composition. So if I hit preview, you can see that no matter the duration of the layer, the out point of the layer is locked to a certain position. Let's look at why that's happening. If I look at clip one, we know that we have the templator settings effect controls applied to it. So we can see here for the out point target, it's slate two, which is this layer, and then the out point trims to the end point of slate two. Okay, so we can see here that the out point is actually targeting slate two, and it's targeting the end point of slate two with a 15 frame compensation. That is why this out point is locked in this position. Likewise, if we go to clip two, we can see here on its templator settings effect, we've got the out point targeting this layer right here. And we've got the out point trimming to the end point of that layer of text steel. And so there you have it. Here's text steel. There's the end point trimming to that with, of course, the 23 frame compensation. So that is how the end points are staying in place. If we didn't have the rule to trim the out point to the end of this layer, we might get in trouble down the line with this layer interfering with another layer in the composition. For example, let's say instead of having this target this layer and you know cut the out point, we're just gonna set this to none and then set this to preserve end. When I do that, what's gonna happen is you know, the out point will match the end time of the layer for each iteration. But you can see here, this is an immediate problem here. So the problem is, is that, you know, this clip number one is interfering with clip number two. This should not be the case. And so that's why we actually set up the trim. So if I do slate two for that target, and then the end point as where the out point maps to or moves to, and then we do preview, you can see we don't run the risk of this layer interfering with this layer. Okay, so that's a practical example of trimming. I hope that you really enjoyed it and you think creatively with how to use trimming and may your compositions be more dynamic each and every day that you use Templator. And feel free to send us questions and visit our forums. Don't forget to click to subscribe to our channel so you can learn the latest techniques for automating your video production process. I'm Ari Stapchansky, signing off. Thanks again.